to Evangel Church Online. You ever felt that your life was ordinary? Maybe a little bit dull? Wondered what God could do with you because your life just is so ordinary? And from time to time, maybe I felt this, and maybe you have too, that it just kind of seems like God does exciting things with other people, but not with me. You ever felt that way? We're going to look at the life of someone who lived what in our eyes would seem to be a very unremarkable life. Very ordinary. I've been preaching a series called Unlikely Heroes, and last week talked about the calling of Abram, who became Abraham, and how there was nothing about Abram before God called him that made him stand out. He wasn't some sort of spiritual superstar seeking God with everything that he had, and because of that, God called him. All of those things happened after God called him, because God called him. And the God calls ordinary people, just like you and me, and he was calling you, and he's calling me today. Well, today we're going to look at his son, Isaac. And in many ways, Isaac seems even more unlikely a hero than Abraham. But God called him, spoke to him directly, and he's one of the patriarchs, just like Abraham. We're going to read about him in Genesis chapter 26, verses 23 to 25. From there, he, Isaac, went up to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him that same night and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Fear not, for I am with you, and will bless you and multiply your offspring for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there, and there his servants dug a well. The reason that Isaac seems to be such an unlikely hero is that it just doesn't seem like he does that much. Abraham traveled all over Canaan, up, down, across, down into Egypt, back again. He fights battles against invading kings. God comes and visits him in his tent. Um, Abraham ends up bargaining with God, negotiating over the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham's life is nothing if not interesting after God calls him out of Ur. Thirteen chapters of Genesis are dedicated to Abraham's life. Do you know how many chapters Isaac gets? One and a half. No battles. No trips to exotic locations. Nothing to write home about. As you read those one and a half chapters, you come across a man who just goes about his life. Herds his goats and his sheep and his cattle. Moves his tents from place to place. All in a very tight circle. Never leaves the boundaries of the land that have been promised to him and his father and his children. He doesn't seem to go very far. He doesn't do anything exciting. He just lives an everyday, normal life. In fact, the, one of the very few stories we have about Isaac is really about his son Jacob because Jacob deceives him into blessing him. Jacob and, e and Esau, the two boys of Isaac, were twins. Esau came out first. Jacob followed immediately after. And because of that, Esau was considered the oldest. And Esau would get a double blessing. And Jacob wanted it. He wanted the blessing of the firstborn. And towards the end of Isaac's life, Jacob decides that he can't wait any longer. And he's going he's gonna to trick his dad into blessing. He overheard that Isaac asked Esau to go and 
and kill some game and, and prepare it and cook it. And uh, Esau went off into the into the wilderness to, to hunt. And while he was gone, Jacob cooked, had a goat stew prepared. Esau was a, is described as a hairy man in the Bible, and, and Jacob was, was fair. And so, so he puts goat skins on his arm, bare arms and on the back of his neck, so he'll feel like Esau. Esau must have been really hairy for a goat skin to feel like him. He wears Esau's clothes into the tent, so he'll smell like Esau. Because his father Isaac by this time was blind. And he comes in prepared to deceive his father. And, and Isaac comes up to him. And there's something about He comes up and he embraces him. And feels his neck and his arms. And he goes. It, it feels like Esau. It, it, you smell like Esau. But you sound like Jacob. And despite his questioning, he blesses Jacob anyway. Isaac really doesn't come across as being a paragon of critical thinking in this story. He, in fact, he kind of comes across as not too bright. But he's listed as one of the heroes. When God reveals himself to Moses, he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So despite an unremarkable life, Isaac is listed as one of the heroes, one of the patriarchs, one of the giants in the Israelite family tree. Now, now you may well be asking, Pastor Jamie, why are we spending time on this? What's this got to do with us today? Well, I think there's a very real lesson here for us. I think we're more impressed by spectacular events than God is. I think we're more impressed by someone who appears on the surface to be a big deal than God is. When you look at Isaac, in this one and a half chapters, when you look at Isaac's life, what you notice is that Isaac lived a life of undivided faithfulness. There, we can compare him to Abraham, his father. There was a famine in the land. Abraham immediately went, we need to go somewhere where we can get food, and he traveled down to Egypt. When Isaac faced a similar circumstance, there was another famine. Isaac thought to himself, God has promised to look after me. God has asked, told me to stay here. My father Abraham told me to stay here. So I am going to stay here, and I'm going to trust God to provide for me and my family. And he doesn't go anywhere. We can read how Abraham and his wife Sarah couldn't have children. The Bible tells us that Sarah was barren, unable to have children. And yet when God promised to make a great nation of them, they went, well, how can this happen? So Abraham and Sarah decide that, well, they'll help God out, and they'll kind of they'll come up with a plan. And Sarah says, take my slave, who they got in Egypt when they went there because of the famine, and have a child with her that we can raise as our own. Therefore, we can make this happen. When Isaac faced the same challenge, the Bible says that Rebekah, his wife, couldn't have children. Instead of trying to fix it himself, he prays, asks God to open her womb, and she becomes pregnant with Jacob and Esau. You and I might think our lives lack interest, that they're unremarkable, pedestrian. And because of that, God isn't using us or maybe can't use us. But Isaac shows us 
There's no such thing as unremarkable. You and I can live lives of uninterrupted faithfulness. Or as Eugene Peterson wrote, a long obedience in the same direction. Going to work and school every day, living a life of quiet obedience to God. Loving Him with everything that we have. And when faced with challenges, when faced with difficulties, rather than trying to deal with them the way the world does, the way we think everybody else is dealing with it, saying, God, what do you want, what do you want me to do? Tell me, and I'll do it. Loving those around us, like ourselves. Living like Isaac. Being faithful, obedient, each and every day. You see, there's no telling what kind of impact a life that on the surface looks unremarkable, but deep down is one characterized by unceasing obedience to the Father. There's no telling what kind of impact a life like that will have. What impact it will have on your family, what impact it will have on the people around you, what impact it will have on you. God uses the everyday. God uses the ordinary. In fact, I would posit that he uses the everyday and ordinary far more than he uses anything else. Because he wants to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. He wants to take the ordinary and the everyday and make it have extraordinary effect. God uses unremarkable people like Isaac. God uses unremarkable people like you and me. People who are willing to be characterized by a long obedience in the same direction. Are you ready to be called? Are you ready to be added to the list of unlikely heroes? God's calling. He wants you. Have a wonderful, 